Iceland's capital Reykjavik, a place that struck me with its unique charm immediately. A city full of Nordic atmosphere, unique little places, culture and history. Join our trip to Reykjavik, the home of every third Icelander, and visit the best places to see, eat and to explore. Good morning everyone! Today we are not going to a remote destination, no, we are actually heading back to Reykjavik. Uh, does that mean that our Iceland trip has ended after circumnavigating the island and crossing it through the highlands on Route 35? Definitely not! We are actually going to Reykjavik to head to even more adventurous places, so stay tuned. I will not tell you yet about the adventures ahead. Instead, I want to take you with me on my motorcycle to enjoy the ride and finally introduce Iceland's capital Reykjavik to you, which probably is one of the coolest cities on earth. There are of course a hundred detours you could do. We are actually kind of passing all the areas that we visited in the beginning of the trip, like Flatty Island and so on. But this time we will just stay on the ring road and go to Reykjavik as quick as possible to spend also a bit of time there and explore the city. We should have Getting close to Reykjavik now and I actually don't want to go to the hotel straight away but to another place first that is iconic for Reykjavik. So this here is Reykjavik downtown and even though the place we are going to is big you don't see it yet but wait here we are we're back in Reykjavik and standing in front of one of the most important sites here and I will take you on a tour around Reykjavik a bit later The city's most well-known landmark is Hallgrimskirkja, and that was also the first stop I wanted to take after successfully circumnavigating and crossing Iceland with our motorcycles and coming back to the place where it all started. When you take a stroll through downtown Reykjavik, Hallgrimskirkja is hard to miss. This remarkable building stands proudly over 70 meters high as one of the country's most iconic landmarks. Named after the revered Icelandic poet and cleric man Hallgrimur Peterson, the church stands as a tribute to his profound impact on Icelandic literature and religious life. Construction of the church began in 1945, but it wasn't until 1986 that it was completed. Over these four decades, Hallgrimskirka grew into one of the most remarkable structures that now dominate Reykjavik skyline. The architect Gudjon Samuelsson envisioned a structure that would embody the grandeur and mystique of Iceland's unique geology. Stutlaberg, the Icelandic term for basalt columns, represents a captivating natural phenomenon of Iceland's volcanic landscape. 
These striking symmetrical hexagonal columnar formations are created by the cooling and crystallization of lava. The design of Halgrimskirchia is a homage to these natural basalt formations. As you step inside Halgrimskirchia, you step into an interior of calmness. Even though the church can get a busy place with all its visitors. But the vast open space with its high ceilings and minimal decor creates an atmosphere of tranquility and introspection. Halgrimskirchia is also one of the best places to get a great view over Reykjavik. An elevator takes you up to the bell tower and from here you have a 360 degrees view over the whole city. With roughly 130,000 inhabitants, Reykjavik is home to every third Icelander. Even though that might sound like a small citizen number for a capital city, Reykjavik is not short on nice shops, culture and museums, and a thriving food scene. One of Iceland's most famous places to eat is probably a sausage stand. Bayarin Spetsru Pilsur sells lamb hot dogs and lines are always huge. I skipped this one though, the lines were too long for me and due to not eating much meat in general, it was also not very tempting to me. More to my liking was Port and Co which you already recognize by its brightly painted exterior that is a Reykjavik landmark. Take the cinnamon bun, a must when visiting Iceland or any other Nordic country. For a breakfast to sit down, I can highly recommend the small cafe Krai Katurin that only has a few tables. We actually even went there twice because we liked it so much. And the best restaurant to dine out? There are so many. For example, the Hip Apotek, the super traditional three coats, the very basic but lovely Hornet, and to my big surprise, my most favorite due to having had Icelandic food for weeks already, was the Indian restaurant Austur India Felagit. And if you didn't have the famous Plokfiskur fish dish yet, that I fell in love with, head to the restaurant Messin. Plokfiskur number two, or three to be precise. And what we're here for is this one. I'm trying to find the best one here in Reykjavik. Bon appétit! Bon appétit. Then you get this kind of bread, the typical sweet dry bread. So what is your judgment for this one? This one is very good, not as good as the last one we had, but I think last time we were also super hungry. So, this is what Reykjavik is famous for, rye bread ice cream. It's interesting. <laughs> My favorite part of Reykjavik turned out not to be the city center, but the old harbor, where you can also find this delicious ice cream shop Valdis. And the old workshops have meanwhile transferred to hip shops, restaurants and even a food hall. Around the corner at the harbor you can book whale watching tours or visit the Maritime Museum. Reykjavik Maritime Museum has a permanent exhibition entitled 
Fish and Folk. Discover the world of fisheries by the Reykjavik Harbor in a building that previously housed the Reykjavik Municipal Fishing Company. In addition, the museum has floating exhibits. The Coast Guard vessel Odin and the tugboat Magni, which are tied up at the museum's pier. If you only can see one museum during your stay in Iceland, I would go for the settlement exhibition, because you can learn so much about the history and beginnings of humans inhabiting Iceland. The focus of the exhibition is the remains of a hall from the settlement age, which was excavated in 2001 and which was inhabited from 930 to 1000. North of the hall are two pieces of turf, remnants of a wall, which was clearly built shortly before 871. This is one of the oldest man-made structures so far found in Iceland. But as interesting as the old finds are all the information you can find along the way of the museum. Now I found the best museum. It's the Icelandic Fallos Museum. Yeah, you heard right. The Icelandic Phallological Museum is an entirely independent family-owned establishment. And yes, you find what the name indicates. Hundreds of phallic specimens, from whales to the complete Icelandic mammal fauna, like foxes, reindeer, horses or even mice. And yes, it sounds like fun, but I would still go for the settlement museum if you have time for only one museum. So guys, we are back on the bikes because a visit to Reykjavik is not only Reykjavik downtown. There is so many things to do here and um, there are quite some active geothermal areas. That's why we are heading into the direction now where actually also the famous Blue Lagoon is. The Blue Lagoon is by the way a must visit for many Iceland tourists. We skipped this side because we prefer to take another motorcycle ride into the same area. Guys, do you see this? Beautiful volcanic mountains here. And we are just about 20 minutes from Reykjavik. Isn't that crazy? And I was told that there is also an amazing gravel road that we should take here. So we're looking for that one now. But of course, you would not be us if you would just stay on the main road. We're now doing another detour, which is taking us into the mountains and into the volcano landscape. Super windy, super cold, but it already looks promising. The Reykjanes Peninsula in southwest Iceland has been one of the most active volcanic areas since 2020, after nearly 800 years of inactivity. Also, all the recent volcanic eruptions happened on the peninsula, and one was just about to start when we visited this area. We are still looking for this gravel road that was suggested to us, but this is really beautiful now. Beautiful.
So we ended up at the skiing area here, which is too far. So obviously we missed the road that we were looking for. But do you see all these people here in the orange coats? Uh, that is actually usually volcanic scientists. So we heard already about it and felt some eruptions the last um, days here in Reykjavik. But actually, um, yeah, it could be here in this area that a new volcano is erupting soon. I mean, it is here in the area, but we didn't know that it might be so close to where we actually are at the moment. Oh my God, do you see this? This road is closed. I think that was the road we wanted to take, but isn't this crazy? This might be just closed because um, the volcanic eruption everybody is waiting for um, might happen soon. And to be honest, we really had no clue that it's right here. Our excursion from Reykjavik came to a more quick halt than we thought, but we were not too sad because back in Reykjavik, there was still one of the most important landmarks waiting to be explored. Harpa is one of Reykjavik's newest and most significant landmarks. Completed in 2011, the huge gleaming structure on the water's edge is a concert hall and community center with cafes and restaurants. But that sounds much more boring than it actually is. It looks like a distorted Rubik's Cube and is an architectural masterpiece and is truly unlike any other building in the world. Outfitted with tens of thousands of LED lights, this building literally comes alive with color in the evening as colors and patterns move across the entire facade of the building. And during the day, you feel like walking through a shining diamond, the sun and water reflecting in thousands of small windows. Today is the first day of a new adventure. As you can see, we're not on motorcycles today. We are in a car. And we will drive some of the roads that we couldn't drive with motorcycles because there are some of these F roads here in the highlands that just have two high water crossings so you're not able to drive them with a motorcycle and we still want you to see them. So stay tuned. Guys, this was Iceland's amazing capital Reykjavik. Definitely one of the must visit cities on the planet, even though it's so small. If you agree, give this video a thumbs up and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Iceland content. In the next episode, we will leave the city life again and this time approach some of Iceland's most difficult roads all by ourselves in a 4x4 vehicle. Tune in to join this amazing part of our Iceland trip.